हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी डू सब्सक्राइब इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी इफ यू हैवन डन इट येट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम व्हिच सेज दैट द सिलेंडर द यूनिफॉर्म सिलेंडर बार ऑफ लेंथ 2r एंड मास m रेस्ट अगेंस्ट द सर्कुलर सरफेस इज शोन सो वी हैव दिस यूनिफॉर्म बार व्हिच हैज लेंथ ऑफ 2r एंड मास m and it rest on this circular surface of radius r it is said that determine the normal force at the small roller e and the magnitude of the ideal pivot reaction at e so we have to find the magnitude of the normal reaction at this point a at this roller and here we have to find the reactions so now the, here we will have uh, at o we will have o x reaction let's say this will be our o x reaction and here we will have o y reaction let's say and the weight of the bar is going to act at a, the midpoint of this bar so if i show that weight so that weight is going to act somewhere here so this is that weight it, it will be equal to mg and this distance will be from here to here this distance will be 2r divided by 2 so this will be r and now the the normal force at point a is going to act in this direction that will be the reaction at a and the line of action of this uh reaction at a will pass through this center since uh since this force will be perpendicular uh perpendicular to the surface of this uh circular surface so this is na let me write that this is na now to find this na we have to apply the summation of the moment the summation of the moment about point o equals to 0 and if we assume that the counter clockwise moment is positive so as we can see that uh this mg is producing the this mg is producing the counter clockwise moment so we will write mg and the perpendicular distance of this mg from that point o is this distance so we do not know this distance we have to find this distance and secondly to find the moment of this na we have to resolve this uh, na into its component since uh, we cannot find its moment directly since it is making some angle with this point a so before going to apply this equation we have to find this angle and we have to find the angle of this normal force with the horizontal we have to find this angle so for that i will i will remove this and we will consider that somewhere is let's say here we have let's say angle theta so first of all we have to find this angle theta so here if i draw this uh, diagram so this is that point o somewhere here is that point e and if i join this so this is that o a r so this length is this length is 2 r this is 2 r and this is that center point of the circle this is this particular point so here we have that theta and this length is given this is 1. 25r and this will be the radius let's say that the center of the circle is let's say point c so ac this ac length is the radius this is given and this is 2r now to find this theta we can apply the law of cosine since we know the length of all these three sides so by law of cosine we can say that 2r square this will be equal to r square plus 1.25 r square minus 2 into r into 1.25 r cos of the opposite angle right so the cos of the opposite angle is cos of theta now we have to find that uh, cos of theta so this will be 4 r square this will be r square and 1.25 1.25 square this will give us 1.5625 let me write it is 1.5625 r square and this is 2 into 1.25 so this gives us 2.5 so minus 2.5 r 
cos of theta. So now if I bring this term to this side of the equation and bring this term to the other side of the equation, so we will have the equation like this. We will have 2.5 r. This will become this will become r square. So r into r. This is r square. Remember. So this is 2.5 r square cos of theta. This will be equal to r square plus 1.5625. R square minus 4 R square, and if we divide this whole equation by R square, so R square will cancel out, and we will be left with 2.5 cos of theta equals to 1 plus 1.5625. This is remember that this is 1 multiplied by R square, right? So we will be left with 1. So one plus one point five six two five minus four, and if we want to find that angle, so we have to divide both sides by two point five. So this will be divided by two point five, and if we want to find that angle theta, we have to take cos inverse. So theta is equal to cos inverse of this. So cos inverse. 1 plus 1.5625 minus 4 divided by 2.5. This gives us theta equals to 125.099. Let's see. So this is that angle theta. Now we know this. We know this angle theta. We know this angle theta. So let's say that this angle is alpha. So we have to find this angle alpha as well. Let's see. Let's say this angle is alpha. So now we can find that angle alpha by applying the sine's law. So let me write it here: sine of alpha divided by the length of the opposite side, which is r. That will be equal to sine of that theta, which is 125.099 divided by the length of the opposite side, which is 2r. So, <clears throat> so if we multiply both sides of equation by r, so r will cancel out. And we will be left with this equation. And now, if I take sine inverse, so we can write that alpha will be equal to sine inverse of this value. Let me find this value first. So this is uh, sine of 125.099 divided by 2. This gives us this, and now the sine inverse of this answer. This is let me write it as zero point. This is zero point four zero nine one. Let's see, and if we take the sine inverse of this answer, this gives us angle equals to twenty four point one four seven. So alpha equals to twenty four point one four seven degrees. This is that angle alpha. So now we know the angle alpha here as well. So now if I extend, if I extend this horizontal line, so if this angle is theta, then this angle is 180 minus theta. Since this whole angle is 180 degrees, so 180 minus theta will give us this angle. So let me find that 180 minus theta. So 180. Minus theta is 125.099, so this gives us 54.9. So let me write that that this angle is this angle is 54.90. So now once we know this angle, we can resolve this and a into its components at the center of this circle. So now this and a will have one term which is going to act in this direction. This one will be the cos component, and it will have one component which is going to act in this direction. So this one is the cos component. This is an a cos of 54.90, and this one is an a sine of 54.90. And the perpendicular distance of mg from that point O is this distance. So we have to find this distance. So for this, we have to consider this right angle triangle. So if we consider this right angle triangle, this the the point at which mg acts is uh, at a distance of r from this point O. So this length is r. This length is r. Remember, this is 2r divided by 2, which is r. And this angle is alpha. So now 
this length will be this length will be r cos of alpha so now we can apply the summation of the moment about point o that will be equal to zero and if we consider that the counterclockwise moment is positive so that an a uh, if we look into the components of an a so this component is this component is passing to that point o so it is not going to produce the moment about point o so the sign component is producing the moment about point o and it is producing the clockwise moment so i will write minus an a sine of 54.90 and its moment arm from that point o is this distance which is 1.25 r this is the perpendicular distance of this component from that point o so we will multiply this with 1.25 r and similarly this mg is going to produce the counterclockwise moment so i will write plus mg and the perpendicular distance of this mg from that point o is this distance which is the cos component of this r so i will multiply this mg with r cos of alpha and we know alpha alpha is 24.147 this will be equal to zero so now from this we can write that minus an a sine of 54.90 degrees into 1.25 r this will be equal to minus mg r cos of 24.147 so if we divide both sides of the equation by r so r will cancel out minus will cancel out and from this we can write that n a the normal force at the roller will be equal to mg cos of 24.147 divided by sine of 54.90 and here we have 1.25 as well so multiply by 1.25 so this is cos of 24.147 divided by 1.25 sine of 54.90 so this gives us 0.892 and a is equal to 0 0.892 mg so and a is the normal force at a is 0 0.892 times the weight of the and to the weight of that slender bar now to find the resultant reaction at point o we have to apply the summation of forces along x and the summation of forces along y so let's copy this uh, diagram So this is that OX. So now if we apply the summation of forces along X, that will be equal to zero. And this is our positive direction. So as we can see that OX is acting in the negative direction. So we will write minus OX. And the cos component of NA is acting in the positive X. So we will write it is plus NA cos of 54.90. And there is no other component in the x direction, so this will be equal to 0. And from this, we can write that OX is equal to NA cos of 54.90. Now, NA is known, this is 0 0.892. This is 0 0.892 mg. 0 0.892 into cos of 54.90 so this is 0 0.513 0 0.513 mg this is ox similarly if we apply the summation of forces along y that will be equal to 0 and this is our positive direction so oy is acting in the positive y direction this is oy so we will write oy and the sine component of an a is acting in the positive y direction as well so i will write plus an a sine of 54.90 this will be equal to zero and from this we can write that o y is equal to minus an a sine of 54.90 and an a is 0. 
and a is 0 0.892 mg so this is 0 0.892 sin of 54.90 so this is 0 0.730 like 0 0.730 mg so this is oi but we have the negative sign so the negative sign tells us that oi is acting in the opposite direction of the assumed direction oi is acting in the downward direction so so oi magnitude is 0 0.730 mg and it is acting in the downward direction now to find the resultant reaction at o we can apply the pythagoras theorem so o will be equal to o x square plus o y square under the square root and then we can write that o x is 0 0.513 mg square plus 0 0.730 mg square and then we will take the square root so this will be equal to 0 0.513 square mg square plus 0 0.730 square mg square under the square root and we can take mg square common so we will be left with with this we will have and now mg will come out of the of the square root so we will have the equation like this this will be so now square root 0 0.513 square plus 0 0.730 square so this gives us 0 0.892 o is equal to 0 0.892 mg so this is the resultant reaction at point o and the normal force at the kinetic point a is 0 0.892 times mg so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning